Hey guys, this is Steven with NorCal Screen Print Supply. In today's video, we're gonna do a two color halftone print. We're gonna print black ink and white ink together to make a photographic image on a shirt. We're gonna show the, the separation process, the screen exposure, and the actual printing. And if you watch and listen closely, you might even pick up a couple of Photoshop tricks. Stick with us, we're getting started right now. What's up guys, this is Matt with NorCal Screen Print Supply. Today I'm going to run you through a two color separation a photo half tone print with white ink and black ink. You can print this on any color shirt. We're working in Photoshop, you don't need a rip software. I'm going to run it through all completely manual. Um, so all you need is Photoshop for this. So we've got a photo here. Um, let's see, let me pull this up. We're going to start by opening a new document. Um, we print on a 17 inch roll, so we're going to go with the 14 by 17. That's our maximum print size on a pre burn screen, too. Uh, 600 resolution, and click OK. We're going to place our file into the document here. Uh, John Cardiel. Let's get him in a gnarly front side grind here. So, all hell Cardiel, get this print going. So what we're going to do first is, this image is essentially grayscale already, but just for the sake of it, we're going to image mode grayscale. Don't rasterize anything unless you have to, and you don't have to on this, so just click don't rasterize. Next thing we're going to do is duplicate our layer. This is going to be our white layer. So after that, Go ahead and I always just click the eraser that'll bring up the prompt to rasterize the photo that will allow you to invert the file. Go command I for invert and label this white. So now we have white and black, black ink, white ink. So now we have them labeled. Next thing we're going to do, isolate our black layer. Go image mode bitmap, click OK, make your input match your out output, 600 resolution, make sure you're using half tone screen, click OK. And this is the part that is a little confusing to people. The formula that we use is mesh count divided by 5, that will give you your maximum frequency. We're going to go ahead and print these on 230s and we're going to stick with a 40 line half tone. It's not going to be too difficult to burn. You actually go too high on the frequency, your, got, your dots get too small and are difficult to burn. So we're going to click OK and zoom in and you can see we have our half tones here. At this point, go File, Save As and label your file. Go Cardio Black 40 LPI and save. At this point, I use Option Command Z that will step you back into your original file. Uh, and learning shortcut on the keys is super important. Like you, the more you do this, you're going to get a little snappy with it. Um, you could also go just edit uh, step backward, and all these will give you little shortcuts when you go down and check the. Uh, the command there. So now we have our black, so let's go in and go to our white. Same thing, isolate the white layer, image mode, bitmap, click OK, half tone screen, 600, make your frequency the same. Angle 26 is always a safe angle, that'll work regardless of what you do. I know there's like the 0, 15, 45, 75. When you're getting into CMYK, that really is not that important. You do 26, it'll work always. So zoom in, now we have our white. You can go File, Save As. Go Cardio, White. Step back. Now what we're going to do is put these files back in. There's our black file. Cardio white. There's our white file. 
now we have them back in our file black and white versions okay now this is another little trick that I like doing to help with registration so I've pre-sized this image it's 12 by 8 I'm going to change my canvas size to oops 12 Image size 12 by 8. Make sure that's centered. So what I like to do here, and you shouldn't always do this, but for these two color prints, I'm basically going to trap the white halftone layer to make the black easier to print. So we're going to select the magic wand, click the black, click similar, and then go to image adjustments. Oops, sorry. Sorry, select, modify, expand. And we're just going to do one pixel. Click OK. This also needs to be rastered to do any changes to it. So hit your eraser. Go back into your wand. We've already expanded one pixel. See, just a little bit and fill it with black and it's just going to get a little bit larger and make your print just a little bit easier. So the whole idea of this white and black ink is that your white base is going to give you a nice vibrant white for a black shirt or a red shirt or whatever and then you're still printing that same black which is nice high detail and your end print is going to look much better. So you have all that. Let's go ahead and save our file here. Films. Registration marks. I'm using Option to duplicate these, holding Shift to keep them in a straight line. You can also make registration templates. I like to just add them as I go. Group them to keep organized. Bring up our text tool. Right here. Change our color to black so we can see what we're doing. Okay, make sure we have our white file. Okay, so now we have our halftone applied, our registration marks added, our color labeled. Now we're ready to print a film. So we'll click print. Go into print settings, make sure we have the right size selected. For us again, it's 14 by 17. See, we do have quite a bit of extra here. So when you're on a roll format, you can kind of trim it up just so you don't waste a bunch of film. So look at that, 12 by 17 works good for this. Let's print it at 100% and send it to the printer. Do the same thing here with black. Relabel. Click print. Send it to our other printer. And we're off to the races, ready to burn some screens.
next step, we got our films ready to go. We've got our black film positive for our black ink. We've got our white film negative for our white ink. We put these together, line them up, they look great. So we're gonna take these back to our screen tech. He's gonna burn some screens. We're gonna put them on our press. We're gonna print some samples for you. Follow me. So we're gonna run these on 230 mesh, a nice tight weave. And we do that so we hold these half tone dots very tight and the dot doesn't expand too much. If you burn half tones on low mesh, the ink will travel through the half tone dot and it will expand on your substrate and you lose detail. So we're gonna run these on 230. Grambo! Here we have our bearded screen technician. Thank you, sir. He's got screens ready to go, so he's gonna go ahead and line those up on our screens and expose them to our light. We're gonna pre-develop those in a tank with just water and then we're gonna rinse them out, let them dry, and they'll be ready to print. With the two color design, we wanna make sure that we're nice and centered on both screens. Generally, we like the artwork to be around five inches from the frame. We measure that by using the T-square. We want it to be nice and straight. Once you have it lined up, take some clear tape and tape it down. careful to flip it over and make sure your film doesn't move at all. Alright, now we're ready to expose and uh, we're doing it for 25 seconds. So. And uh, here I like to go and uh, line up the next one. Here we have our next design. Make sure it's nice and centered with the other one. Here you can also check and make sure there's no dust particles or um, pinholes or anything. And if, you're, if you don't have any, then you're good to go. Here I like to check and make sure we washed out properly. Didn't lose any detail or anything. Looks like I need to wash it out more there. Pop it out in the sun to dry. Grab our next one. All right, so we're gonna lay down the first layer of white ink, and this is a test print. We're gonna register the black ink to the white ink. And we're laying the white ink down on a black shirt so that when we bring the other screen over, we can see it very easily. We can see our registration marks, we can see the print, and uh, yeah, it'll be fun. Check it out. Gonna go ahead and flood it. And make sure I cover the reg marks as well. I'm gonna pull this one. Got my off contact set nicely. 
I'm gonna go ahead and hit it a few times just to get it through and check it out there so quite a bit of white ink what the black ink is going to do is bring it to life a little bit more so we're going to go ahead and flash this under our flash dryer and bring it back and run the black on top of it but first we're going to register it so i'll show you that so now we've got our black screen kind of lined up a little bit ready to go we're going to we're going to take a look and see if it's in registration which it's not and i don't expect it to be because all we did was put it in to our screen clamp so I'm going to loosen the print head right here with these. It's very easy to do. And I'm going to begin to register the black ink to the white ink. The way I like to register my jobs is I get all the vertical lines lined up in our registration mark. And then I bring the screen over either way to line it up. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this back here. And I'm using the micro registration. When I, when I use the micro on this side, I'm looking at my registration dot on the same side as this of the screen so uh, I actually am going to get all of the lines in the square that are horizontal into registration first I'm going to come over here and I'm going to back it up a little bit the same way until I see that it's in and I'll look over here again and I'm liking that pretty good here you can see you can see how sm small or how tiny of movements we're making with this micro registration. That's why it's called micro registration is we're making micro changes in where the screen is positioned. And that's why, that's why micro registration is necessary for doing uh, multicolor jobs. You can get by without it, but if you're doing a lot of jobs in your screen printing that are multicolor, micro registration becomes very key to have. So I have it pretty close and I'm going to finish by using this last adjustment which actually just only moves the screen side to side. So I have all my horizontal lines lined up. Now I'm just going to bring it over toward me actually a little bit and you see how the, the, registration, the registration mark just kind of lit up. When it gets into registration like that you can see it a lot better. And that's what we're looking for right there. We're looking for it to kind of line up like that and light up as well. And I like that registration. I got it all in. Press down on my screen mesh. It looks good. I'm going to lock in my print head. And you kind of want to do these like you would tighten your tire on your car. You don't want to come in super hard on one side first. You want to kind of gradually get them both tight. And then another thing you want to do before you actually print is you want to lift up your screen, drop it back down, check your registration again to make sure nothing shifted. And it's all looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and print the black ink, see what our print looks like. Go ahead and give it a nice flood. I'm going to clear the ink through. Hit it one more time and we'll have a look. Looks pretty good. That's kind of what we're going for there. Nice photographic imprint. All right, we got our print registered the way we want and it's looking good. We're going to go ahead and use some tape to tape off the registration marks and we're going to tape them off on the bottom. You don't want to tape them off on the top of the screen because then the squeegee will run over the tape and it'll peel it up and ink will get through where we don't want it and we'll have unwanted ink on our shirt and nobody wants that. So there's all three reg marks on the top taped off. All three on the bottom. That's the black screen. There's, and now we are good to go. We can print our first shirt. We're going to do something called print, flash, print. What is print, flash, print? That's where you print and then you flash and then you print. All 
I did three swipes on the squeegee because I noticed on my left side that my ink wasn't quite clearing through my screen. So I do as little squeegee strokes as possible. I only do as many as I have to do to get the screen clear and the ink all the way onto the shirt. So we'll go ahead and flash that one for about 10, 12 seconds. We already printed. We already flashed. We're going to print again. And then guess what? We're going to flash again. And you hear that? That is our screen mesh popping up from the print after we run the squeegee over it. And you absolutely want your screen mesh to pop up after you print it. If it doesn't, it's going to stay stuck down on there and you can actually cure the ink into your screen mesh, which you do not want to do. It's hard to get out of there. All right, I'm going to flash dry this before the black. We're ready for some black ink here. And there we go. Finished print. Okay, so we got our little sample run. We got four shirts. We're going to do three red shirts, a gray shirt. We're going to run two layers of white ink and then one layer of black. So here we go. So I'm going to switch positions. And while this one is under the flash dryer over here, I'm going to move over here and print the next one. So that one's drying. I'm going to print this one. That one under the flash dryer. Get the next one. Nice and crispy. Hitting it three times to get all that plastisol through the the mesh. Okay, now we're gonna hit this top layer white just once. Get that white to pop nicely. One more to clean this right side of the screen. There we go. I'm not going to print two layers of white on this gray because the material color is not so dark that I need to print two layers. If this is on a black shirt or a dark gray shirt, I would print two layers, but the gray is light enough. So one layer of white is good. Looking good, looking exactly how I want it. All right, so we are gonna run the top layer of, of black and we're gonna put it straight into the dryer wet. All right. Ooh, stretch the print a bit, a little bit, so. Looks pretty good. I'll show you how to not warp the print on the next one. There's quite a bit of adhesive on these platens. So anytime you have a lot of adhesive, your print can get warped if you pull it too hard in any one direction. But looks pretty good. There we go, that's what we're looking for right there. That's how you run a halftone print with black and white. You can print it on any color. 
It'll look good. So there you go, guys. This is a two color half tone print with black ink and white ink. Uh, if you have any questions about the color separations that Matt did, or the screen exposure process that Graham did, or the print process that I did, please leave us a comment, ask any question you might have, and uh, check us out on the internet. We're at www.norcalsps.com. If you have any questions about the products used here, give us a call, 916-534-8337. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.